Okay, we're going on live. How you doing? Appliance Bootcamp family and friends. This is Mike Sneed coming to you. Um, let me get this straight. I got, uh, I got my virtual assistant asking me questions as soon as I go on. Give me a couple of seconds. Uh, let me ask for my virtual assistant real quick. Okay, here we go. All right, so uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in <clears throat> today. Uh, tonight is going to be a little short night. Uh, I got some stuff I need to do. <laughs> Uh, I got um, I got to uh, get out an uh, early start in the morning, so I need to go ahead and payroll done for tomorrow because I'm not going to be here first thing in the morning, and I got to take a little trip to go pick up uh, some equipment, and I'm coming back. So I need to do some stuff as soon as I uh, get done with this, uh, this live feed. So it's going to be an hour on this live feed. If, uh, if you hadn't already, uh, I sent out an email. Uh, we got the uh, – we got – the new dates uh, for the courses uh, for people who uh, who who already bought the course. They can go now and actually start uh, uh, selecting their dates that they would like to come up, come out. Uh, so people who have paid for the hands-on live event, uh, we got the new dates in. I thought we would have a president by now, and and I could uh, and things will go a little smoother. Like we it might we'll have our live event and probably still won't have a president. So hopefully they can get that stuff situated. But we can't no longer wait on them. They're not gonna get the stuff cleaned up, so we're gonna go ahead and I'll, I'll put the dates already out uh, for the new live event. You can go ahead and pick those dates um, and and look forward to people who's gonna be coming in. Um, one thing I want to emphasize: do not wait to start your business until you come to the live event. Go ahead and start now. Go ahead do the do the online version and go ahead and start making your money. You come to the live event. I want you to already be have started your business or have done the online version at least. That way you're not coming in here totally green. Uh, so don't don't say I'm going to wait until I do the hand do the hands on. Don't do that. Go ahead and start. Everything you need to know is in the in the um, online on, is on, in the online version. And um, we got new stuff that gonna be coming out daily uh, going forward uh, to get everything up to date. By the time you come to the um, the new hands on live event, so those people who um, who've already done the hands on live and who's done the online, um, I uh, I'll start sending out emails every time I add a new module, so you all can go there and check out the new module uh, that we're putting in. All right, uh, today we're gonna be talking about uh, uh, we're gonna be talking about uh, what happens. If you damage, uh, you if you uh, what, how do you handle damages to a customer's property? Um, if you're in the appliance rep uh, repair business, um, you're doing it long enough, uh, you're gonna run into some damages. <laughs> it's just it's just part of the game. You're gonna run into some damages, um, especially once you start hi um, hiring subs and stuff like that. Um, it's just it's just part of the game. Um, you're gonna run into some damages. Um, you all are lucky because you all are getting advice from people who have went out and hired subs, um, people who have ran their business for a while, myself. Uh, you got you got vast uh, network of people online and um, in the Facebook groups and, and whatnot that you can go to and get uh, get good information from um, that tell you how to actually run your business. When I started, it was nothing like that. <laughs> and nobody was, uh, if you go to the supply houses, Nobody was there trying to give you no instructions on how to run your business. So a lot of my stuff came through trial and error. So I made the mistakes and I took the hit so I can actually help you all uh, with this going forward. Uh, but uh, if, you, if you're doing appliance repair and you're doing it long enough, like I said, you're going to have some damages. And you got to have a way where you can actually uh, handle those damages to keep your reputation well and also to keep... Uh, uh, keep the reputation well and keep the customer at ease. Um, so what you want to, uh, we'll take for instance, um, if uh, we're going to look at it two ways. One, um, if uh, if the damages are something that you caused and you know you caused them and you need to straighten them out, I'll tell you how to handle that. And I'll tell you if it's one where 
uh, you got a customer who, who's trying to get over on you and trying to get something done that you didn't do, how you handle that also. Okay, we'll take the first one first. Uh, if you cause the damage, if you if, uh, if you you had somebody go to a customer house um, and they got ready to uh, install, they installed a dishwasher, something that I had happened uh, many a times uh, when I first got into business. Uh, they go out and they install a dishwasher and they leave the dishwasher. Uh, they don't secure the water inlet line uh, or they put the wrong water inlet water inlet line on the dishwasher um, and it starts to leak and it damaged the customer floors uh, what you do then um, you want to uh, as soon as you find out about it uh, you don't want to uh, and you know you you did go out there and you changed the dishwasher and, it got, and they tell you that they'll, especially they got hardwood floors that's in the floor trying to it's already trying to uh, starting to buckle in front of the dishwasher and uh, uh, they want to know can you come out there and look go look then you go there and look and you will see that the floor, especially with hardwood, it, it'd be like uh, it'd be almost like an earthquake have came. The hardwood floor, it'd be buckled up from the water um, in there. So what you do there, uh, you go there, you turn the water off, uh, you uh, you take the kick plate off and, and get the dishwasher uh, where they can get some, where they can get airflow going up under there, so it won't create no mold or anything. And you want to go ahead then. And get your uh, get your uh, uh, insurance company in as soon as possible. You tell the customer, say, "Okay, um, go who my insurance provider is. Um, I'm gonna get get. I'm gonna put the claim in to them, and they'll have an adjuster come out here and they'll take care of it. Okay, so uh, they'll come out there. The adjuster will come. The adjuster would then take over the process or getting somebody to repair it, paying them. Um, you have a deductible, whoever your deductible is, it might be $800, $500, $1,500, $2,000. $2, if the price of the repair is more than your deductible, then you, uh, you, you'll pay your, just your deductible and, and your insurance company will pay the remainder. If it's less than your deductible, then you just pay that amount and your insurance company is not going to pay anything. And they, um, they, they, don't, uh, they don't harp too much on it if you're paying less than uh, they are. Um, less than your deductible because they're not coming out their pocket. And um, it usually it's not bad when you get ready to go re-sign up for insurance. Because if you get too many claims against your insurance policy, your insurance company is not going to sign you back up when it comes time for renewal. You have to go find your new insurance company. They're going to say, nah, we don't want to pay out anything. Uh, go find you somebody else. And when you do go find somebody else, the price is going to go up. So that's how you do it if you cause the damage. Um, if you're if you're there and the price, um, say like for instance, if you chip somebody uh, for Maco top, uh, uh, I've had that happen uh, with different subs. Uh, they go in there, uh, they uh, not paying attention. Uh, the for Michael top is uh, is already uh, crumbling and is already uh, uh, the 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 powder board up under it is falling apart. So when they uh, when they get ready to take the dishwasher out, um, uh, uh, it, when they pull in the dishwasher, sometimes that uh, that particle board, if you're not careful, on uh, the back of the dishwasher or right there at the top where the where the screws come out at, it might uh, snag that little particle board. It'll make a chip right there at the front of it. They don't let the legs all the way down, so it, it'll make a less like, small chip. Um, when that happens, I know it ain't nothing. You can you can get the old chip and put it there and glue it on, but it's not going to look the same. But uh, you know, you're dealing with something that's 60 years old. Uh, it, it uh, you know, you, sometimes the customer they say, okay, I'm, I'm going to replace it anyway. That's fine, and um, they just tell you keep keep going on. Or if they say I I, I want to get that repaired, you know, you have to let them know. There's no way I can um, I can repair that that little chip. You can try putting some glue there, but they're big to tell. So what you want to do then? You want to uh, make a compromise to them. Um, you just tell them, say, uh, I can't I uh, I can't do that. But what uh, I will do, uh, I will pay you for the damages. I'm not gonna pay to get the whole kitchen remodeled, but uh, for that top, um, I'll pay you uh, 250, maybe 300 dollars. I will pay you for that. Um, and when I do that, 
I'm gonna get them to sign sign uh sign a, a settlement form. And this is the form that I uh that I actually get them to sign. And this this form, it uh it actually tells them. Um, let me find my form. Okay, uh, I'm gonna share this right here. Okay, uh, here it goes. Um, all this is, uh, it just have it be on my company letterhead, whatnot. And I, I'm gonna say the Sneeze Appliance Service and John Doe, that'd be the customer name, hereby agree to compromise the repair amount under the terms condition that follow. Sneed Appliance and John Doe, both parties agree that the repair estimate is $350. Moreover, the party consent that John Doe will accept the sum of $350 and consider it a, as full payment. The acceptance of the payment will be treated as complete discharge of all due bills and John Doe will not take any further step to collect on the alleged debt. Uh, the payment will be made once the agreement is complete and either in uh, send out either pay them a cashier check or money order. Uh, this agreement will be valid until and then I'll put the date. Uh, this is uh, the date that you know you just put any date that you, you will give them um, and be treated as null or void if the debt falls to uh, if the debtor fails to make the payment within the due date and the account status will immediately stand as due meaning if i don't pay them with a cashier check or with a, uh, a money order by this date then all bets are off and i need to pay them that money they can come back and do whatever um but this is right here is the key thing this paragraph right here is the key thing uh, upon successful payment of the compromise amount John Doe agrees to never place any information online about this incident in the future. Both parties are obligated to abide by the rules and regulation of the agreement, and it stands to benefit both parties, uh, their successors, and assignees. And then um, I date and sign, their date and sign, and I date and sign. I keep that in my records. So then if I see anything popping up on social media, anything about the incident, um, I have legal binding to make them have it removed or what. Um, but that's what I do whenever I settle, um, settle with that, uh, with somebody. Um, I have them actually sign that, uh, saying that, hey, uh, we, this is the amount I'm going to take. We good after this. and ain't going to hear nothing else about it. Um, so that's very good to have that information and keep a copy of it going forward that, uh, that you all settle that. Um, the other thing you want to do when you have issues like that, Never go on to social media and actually uh, debate with the with the customer on social media. Always ask to have uh, to take it offline. You know, uh, everybody got uh, got keyboard muscles and stuff on on the internet. But ask them to uh, can, let's take this offline, and you talk to them offline. You don't want to talk to them back and forth on the internet. Um, and so, you, you when you're doing something like that. Uh, call them on the phone and talk and, and, and y'all can get it straight. All right. Uh, the other thing, if you go into somebody's house and and you don't think that you made any damages, uh, uh, anything, but they're saying that you did, um, how you handle that, same thing. Um, you tell them uh, if you all got a disagreement and you, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't, as you say, we used to say set horses, you and the homeowner, call your insurance company. And tell them, say, hey, I got a homeowner. They're claiming that uh, I made some uh, uh, some uh, I made some damages to their property. Um, I didn't make the damages, uh, I, uh, uh, but right now I need you all to go out there and to actually uh, uh, get in between me and the homeowners. And what happened? They'll send the adjuster out. Then the adjuster will look at it, and then the adjuster will uh, tell them, "Okay, if what you're asking, they uh, they didn't do, or you asking, you get somebody asking too much. The adjuster <laughs> come in and say, hey, this is too much,' and, and and they can negotiate on your behalf. And even the uh, adjuster can make an offer. So if you didn't, uh, you can tell the adjuster before they go, say, um, I want to I want to uh, settle this claim and don't have to go against my policy. I want to sell it for like four hundred dollars." Uh, but I can't talk to her. She she wants to talk to you all. 
uh, can you go there and um, I want to settle for four hundred dollars or less? And the adjuster will go there and negotiate on your behalf. And same thing, it won't it won't go against your policy or anything. They'll go there and they'll talk to her and they'll let her know, hey, hey if they see it's not even four hundred dollars, they get the price down where it should be. And uh, you and what they'll do, they'll tell you you pay the you pay your you write the check to your insurance company, and then your insurance company then look like the insurance company handled it and you and, and and get you out the middle of being the bad guy so you can say hey I, I i sent it to the insurance company this is what they said it is um uh, no it's nothing else i could do now they can get mad about it and go online still but still you have you, you have that in your records the insurance company settled it and they say this is what it is you can't do no more than that um you know but turn it into your insurance company so that's what you do if you got disagreement you have the insurance company go out there um, and they can get in between you and a customer if y'all have kind of gotten sideways um, uh, amongst each other. And like I say, if you're in business long enough, you're going to have you're going to have some damages if you uh, if you do this long enough. And uh, same thing, uh, if you are in business long enough, you're going to have if you're doing a lot, uh, a lot of business. Um, and especially once, like I say, once you start bringing subs in, into the mix and you're doing. Uh, you, you get up to doing 30 or more calls a day. Um, you're not going to. And, and the other thing, too, you start doing 30 or more calls a day and you haven't quite identified who your true customer is. Um, you're going to have some um, problems. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you're going to have some problems. <laughs> you're going to have some problems, um, especially when you bring in new customers on. Um, bringing new uh subs and stuff on um you want to vet people as much as you can but everybody is different you know you have some people who are great 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 technicians they can fix anything but they terrible with uh people skills you no know? but they they go there and, and because they're a little standoffish and stuff um people might not you know it's not good people skills um and you might have a technician who suck who can't fix anything but he's great with people skills and the people love him. So, so uh, you're going to, you're going to have that. Uh, so you, you got to be mindful that those things are going to happen to actually, uh, to actually offset that and keep going. Um, now, if you get bad reviews and stuff like that, the way you can handle bad reviews, let me pull up my web website. You can actually uh, collect your own reviews. You can get some, but you can actually uh, collect your own reviews to offset um, the bad reviews. So let me see here. Uh, let me find, I, I used to have a test. Let's see if I got a testimonial page. Give me a second. I'm gonna see if I got a testimonial page. But uh, what you do, you have testimonials where you get reviews and stuff because uh, your company ain't gonna be everything for everybody. So what you do, you have your own testimonials where you get out in front of everybody and you 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 you, you paint the picture uh, uh, how your company is supposed to look. And you you once you find out who your customers are, your customers then would take over for you. Uh, kind of like uh, kind of like here with Appliance Bootcamp, uh, where I'm trying to find my I'm trying to find where I, where I got my testimonials at. I gotta find that, but kind of like a plans boot camp, where uh, where I uh, I have people who say, oh, Mike Snead, uh product is no good, he lying and this and that. But on top of that, I also have uh, I have my true customers who deal with me who will come to my defense and say, nah, his his good, uh, he 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 he's doing great stuff. And uh, and they'll actually come come on and, and fight for my behalf. But the same thing happens with uh, uh, when you when you collect your own reviews. Uh, here, go right here. When you collect your own reviews, uh, you can actually have your customer come and actually uh, uh, defend you uh, if somebody does go and they they speak highly of you. So let me see if I can share this one. Here you go. So what I do what I do here. Uh, right here, if you can see it, um, I got like four pages 
the, uh, my website catch, uh, catches actual feedback. Uh, you can see everything people saying, you know, uh, how was the service? It was service done in a timely manner? Yes. How you rate out quality, excellent you uh, for everything you do to help families in need. I was touched with uh, Tosh. I was, in, I was in touch. I was in touch with uh, Tasha Trap and was informed that the problem was the driver was taking care last week and replacement drive working fine. Thank you for responding so quickly. Your contribution greatly appreciated. Uh, so you you get all this stuff that you actually get. And um, I have maybe a hundred pages of stuff like that where um, I, 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 I was sent out every uh, in my newsletter where everybody could see all the all the reviews and stuff. And I used to put the people names. I tell people got too crazy on um, uh, uh uh, got too crazy on the internet. So people could actually see their neighbors were giving me reviews and they knew that they was, these were real reviews. Um, uh, here, right here, somebody told me that recorded phone calls could be a bit clearer, but call quality aside, the reminders are very helpful. Okay, I have an automated phone call to go out. Uh, keep doing what you are doing. The online capabilities for scheduling are uh, appreciated. Good customer service with the online confirmation of calls to confirm the appointment. That was something Miss Ward was talking about. Uh, who's this? Uh, Mr. Sneed is a wonderful guy. They must not know me very well. I live 15 hours away. My wife told me to call Sneed Electrical because of a problem I was having with my washing machine not spinning. Uh, Mr. Sneed walked me through the process of fixing it on the phone. It saved me a ton of money. <laughs> uh, there you go. He's a heck of a technician. But yeah, you you keep your own testimonials so you can all weigh this stuff. And you and and. and the way things are going now in society, I don't care who you are. Uh, uh, just like now, if you look at this election stuff, um, you're gonna have uh, you're gonna have two people. Uh, uh, you're gonna have two or three people gonna see things two or three different ways. Uh, did, uh, let's see here. Uh, don't let y'all see it. Let me let me pull it back up. Don't let y'all let it. Let me show y'all that testimonial page. Let me see if I can share it again. Uh, let's see here. Boop, boop, boop. Here you go. I'm gonna share here. Share the testimonial. Okay. Here go the testimonial page here. And they say, can I zoom in a little a little bit? Well, here you go. The testimonial page is right here. Uh, this is one of the folders I I, I would keep. And uh. Uh, here you go. Mike and Brandon was professional, prompt, and courteous. We appreciate that. Uh, okay, here you go. Uh, here you go right here. Uh, Mike, how did you know? The newsletter, I used to do a newsletter. Every uh, every month, I would send a newsletter out to all my customers uh, about how they could, little tips on how they can fix their washing machine. Um, hey, Mike, the newsletter you sent is about the laundry machine doing the Zumba, and mine has been doing that lately. I would definitely try the suggestions you listed on the newsletter. Thank you for thinking of us. I uh, hope you are doing well. Have a good summer. And again, thank you for sending that, Joyce. See, I, I used to leave put the put the name so they could see. All right. Uh, Mike and Brandon was professional, neat, and right on time. I'm very impressed. There you go. Uh, I think the service was outstanding. The representative was very honest and professional. I would highly recommend the service to other Renee Battle. So. Yeah, so I used to, like I said, I used to put people names on some of them, so people could actually see that uh, that their neighbors and stuff were actually using us, and they knew they knew who the uh, who the re uh, referrers were coming coming from, and that's how you can actually be because stuff like Yelp, um, as you start to um, as you start to do more business and your business you start to pop, uh, your web page and stuff start to pop up a lot more, and you start getting a lot more uh, uh, a lot more uh feedback from customers yelp is going to come and actually uh be like the better business bureau they're going to ask can they actually you pay an amount to to actually have your uh your uh have have your ratings or uh, have your comments actually pushed in front of yelp uh, i've never paid so if you don't pay to get your name you don't pay for your advertising at yelp then Yelp will hide. Uh, Yelp will hide your good reviews <laughs> and only show your bad <laughs> reviews. So that's the way they kind of push you into paying. So you'd be like, "Man, I got all these good reviews. Why you don't show them? Well, because you don't pay. We show what we want to pay, 
show so that in order for you to show your good reviews they're gonna make you uh make you pay so a lot of people don't don't like you up there's nothing you can do about it unless you pay their money uh so with that you can keep your own reviews and go and like i say if you start doing a bunch of service calls um you're gonna actually start to have some some negative reviews um uh, but once you get your key audience and you dialed into them they actually love what you're doing and they're actually uh they actually come up to your defense and then um they're actually uh people go moon put their neighbors and stuff tell them and their uh people that they in their uh, in their social circle um they'll go more on that and they 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 go by their, the recommendation recommendations that they get from there uh but yeah so um that that's that's how you actually get out in front of bad reviews that's how you actually if you damage somebody's property cuz like i say i hope and i hope it never happens but if you're doing enough service calls, it's going to happen. That's why you got to have insurance. It's going to something is going to happen, or you're going to have a uh, you're going to have a uh, a customer who, uh, who who's going to accuse you of doing something, um, even if you even if you didn't. So you uh, you want to have that insurance there, uh, just just because. And um, uh, and sometimes uh, if if um, I've had this to happen too. Where uh, they had, uh, where they had, I had this to happen when I was an electrical company. Um, we we wired a house uh, for uh, for a guy, and after we wired the house, nobody moved into uh, nobody moved into the house for for maybe like a uh, six months to a year, and um, and when they got ready to move in, we go there to uh, to uh, turn the power on. They they turn the power on. They say everything upstairs work, nothing downstairs working. We was like, no, what's going on? So we go there and we trying to figure out what's going on. And we go up in the house. Somebody that came and cut all the wire from up in the house. Uh, so with that, um, the actual homeowner, um, he wanted us to actually rewire. I say, I'll rewire, but you got to pay. But he, he didn't like that. And so he, he then would uh, uh, call and put a complaint and once you get your insurance company involved, so um, you you call the insurance company, and the insurance company go out there, and uh, you also would call they they would call like the um, state board of electrical contractors, and they go out there and say, hey man, hey they came and stole your copper, and nothing you can do about it. You got to put it on your home on the insurance. And at that time, the guy didn't have insurance on the house because he was trying to flip it. And he he they had stole his water heater, they had stole the the uh, HVAC, they had stole all the copper. He was in a bad shape. But well, eventually he kind of got it back in, in, in place. I'm going to read some of the uh, uh, stuff we got going on in the actual uh, uh, text uh, in, the, in the chat. And like I say, uh, this is going to be a short one tonight because uh, I, I got stuff I got to do um, uh, in the morning. I need to, I need to get, all, get, get off of here at 9. All right. Hey, how you doing, Untamed Kango? Uh, fearful and wonderfully made. Hey, girly girl plans. Hey, what's up? Reload appliance. Hey, how you doing? Because we don't read. What's up? One stop, Mike. Hey, how you doing, picture man? Uh, what's up, Mike? And that's another thing too. Um, uh, if you're doing installs, uh, especially installs, installs. If you're doing installs, that's where most of your damage can come. Uh, you moving something in, somebody gonna uh, say you you scuffed the wall and they want you to repaint the wall. Uh, you, uh, you're gonna have a a lot of stuff comes with uh, doing installs and delivery. So what you do there. Um, you make sure that you take a picture in front of the appliance before you take it out, a picture of the uh, place uh, when you take it out and then show them if you get, you see any damages, anything behind the oven dishwasher, you make them aware of that and then take a picture uh, once you uh, once they install it. And then after they install it, you get them to sign um, sign a waiver saying everything was good, no damages and stuff. Everything's working fine. And uh, you, you go because otherwise. Um, you know, you, you there with the, uh, husband and he, he look at it, everything's good. You, 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 you straight, you move on, you, you leave, um, two days later, the wife call you, um, the dishwasher, I wanted to be two inches over this way. Uh, it need to be an inch over that way. I want to come forward, uh, two inches. And so you, you can, um, and, and you can, you can get there and say, Hey, uh, your husband signed off, say he was happy the way it was. No, uh, you no. Know, it depends on who the person is. If they if they just nitpicking about any and everything, then you can say your husband signed off, said that's the way he wanted it. We can come back out there, but it'd be a service call fee for me to come back out there. 
uh, to do that because we got your husband said that's exactly where he wanted it. Uh, because a lot of times with uh, some of these, uh, some homeowners, they can get to the point where they have you out there moving and measuring and leveling uh, and everything could be level in place, but they have you out there for four hours just uh, being an interior, interior decorator. It's like trying to hang curtains for, uh, for, uh, with, your, uh, with your wife or a significant other. You'll be there all day. So you got to have a way to actually uh, get the customer satisfied, but not, but also you got to get to a point where um, you, you it's, it's not, it's not where um, it's, it's, it's stifling production and whatnot. And it's not, not to say you're not getting good customer service and, and you're trying to, uh, you're just trying to run off, but you, it, it has to be a break in a break point where you say, okay, uh, this is, this is where it's at. You have to make a decision and this is where we're going to, we're going to leave it at. Uh, uh, now, if they want to pay for it, you be there all day. Just move it back and forth for them if they pay for it. But if they want to do it for free. Uh, you have to get to a point where you have to actually stop because you act, you actually starting to lose money on that job. And we are in here to make money. All right. Uh, fearfully and wonderfully made. Got my email signed up for February hands on event. OK, can't wait to see you. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, girly girl, want to know do I have some automated system? I use call them all, and um, also I use appointment quest. Appointment quest, I email them the uh, like uh, when they first uh, they first get their appointment, yeah, email them a confirmation, and then the day before or two days before, yeah, email them and let them a, a reminder that we're coming. And then I have an automated phone call system called uh, call them all. Whereas text them all now, uh, it'll go out and, and call them the morning of. Hey, how you doing, BK from the Rockies? Uh, how you doing, Michael Campbell? All right. Um, my apps, what do you do to document you did not uh, make damage? Is there a way to take a uh, catalog of pictures? Yeah, you can take pictures. You take pictures. Pictures are your best friend. Matter of fact, <laughs> uh, I, I what you call, uh, uh, I, I can't show that but anyway uh i i had one of my i had a, a guy that i used to, to mow some grass at my rental properties uh he he what he, he called me today he texted me and said hey uh i'm i'm over here at this uh, this house address and i just mowed the grass and uh and uh can you send me the money and uh he, he sent me the picture well the picture that he sends me i i look at it and it's an old picture because we have went there. We made some changes to that <laughs> to that rental property. At that rental property, I had made some changes there, and the changes wasn't on the new picture. I said, I said that's not. You know, I said that's an old picture. I said, uh, uh, we made changes there, and um, uh, I said I got a crew that's uh, that's been there uh, all morning doing some work, and I said uh, I uh, I'm gonna call them and see if you've been there, and he was like, hold on a second. Then he said, "Oh, I sent the wrong. I sent the. I sent. The, he told me he sent the text to the wrong person, which he he didn't. He knew what he was doing, but it was just the fact that uh, uh, he didn't think that I would been there uh, at that rental property because I usually don't go there uh, that often. And uh, it, but just so happened I, I was out there in that area, and I had I had somebody go there and do some work while while we was out there, and uh, I knew he wasn't out there. He was just uh, he was telling me this is gonna be the last time we're gonna mow this." this season because of, uh, the grass is dying and uh, I knew he hadn't mowed it and because uh, like I said, I had a crew there all morning and I and didn't see the changes they had done. And I knew the changes they had done the day before. So pictures are your best friend. Can I put the form? Yeah. I, I upload the form in the course. Uh, uh, I put that in the course so you can have it. All right. Uh, Okafor, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Thanks Warren David. Uh, Michael Cowan, you put yeah, I put the um, I put the form in the course so you can download it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Warren Davis, I'm doing thirty a day, uh, uh, thirty a day. I'm doing thirty a week between two people. Wow, I can't wait for the, nah. <laughs> Everybody say they they want those numbers, but like I say, it comes it comes with some it comes with some headaches, and especially if you don't start uh um uh, you don't well I take that back. If you're somebody who who, who 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 builds your business the correct way and you have all the um, policies and procedures in place uh, when you start bringing stubs and stuff in um, and you know how to hire properly and you have a great way of training, 
um, it's, it, it, it's a lot easier than the way I done it. The way I done it, I didn't I, um, like I said, I didn't have I didn't have anybody to actually show me that part of the uh, of the of the business um, when I first started bringing in subs and stuff. I was just going on. Oh, you want to work here? Go out there and do service calls. Um, and I was hoping that uh, people would do the right thing. Unfortunately, you can't manage people. Uh, you can't make people. You cannot. You cannot train people and, and manage people. Um, only thing you can manage is your procedures. So <laughs> you make sure that your procedures are in place. Uh, so that's that's what you do. You can if, if something falls through the crack, it's not that person's fault. If you didn't have it in the procedures, and you go back and, and you change your procedures to make sure that whatever fell through the crack or a problem happened don't happen again. So if somebody uh, somebody scratched somebody's floor um, when they are uh, moving the refrigerator. Um, you got to figure out what happened to cause them to scratch the floor. Oh, they didn't uh, they didn't let the um, the anti tip legs up. So now you go back and you put it in your uh, in your uh, procedures. Whenever you're going to remove a refrigerator. Um, you got to take the kick plate off and you got to screw up the uh, make sure the anti tip legs are screwed all the way up. Um, if the rubber gone is off of the anti tip leg, you got to make sure that you let the customer make them aware. Say, hey, this this garment is off. Um, I'm going to put it on a slide. I'm going to try not to uh, uh, scratch your floor, but you need to put that garment back on there to protect it because sometimes the floors are uneven. And um, you make them aware. If you see something that, that you think might cause damage uh, when you're removing something, um, uh, like for instance, if uh, if the, they built the they built up in front of the dishwasher, and you need to take the dishwasher out, and uh, they built the floor up in front of it, uh, you make them sign waivers. Say, hey, uh, this is this is not a typical uh, uh, a typical install or delivery or a typical repair. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to get it out, but it could damage your countertop. Or I could damage the floors because of the way it's done. Otherwise uh, you, you get somebody to take it out and I'll come back and repair it. And you get them to sign waivers saying that, uh, they, that you're not going to be held responsible. And then you go ahead and get it out. Um, but uh, if you see, you see something that's going to cause a problem like that, you, you bring the customer out there and make them aware it, it could be some damages done and they can, uh, they can sign waivers uh, saying that they're not going to hold you uh, responsible. Otherwise, you don't do it. Do you need an LLC when you're um? I uh, do do need to. Uh, okay, I guess you're asking. Do you need to start with? Do you need to have an LLC to get started in business? Um, yes. If you're gonna start doing repairs, um, you definitely need to have an LLC because LLC does uh, several things. One, um, it it protects you from um. Uh, liability, uh, meaning um, you don't want to go out here and, and flood somebody's kitchen and not have an LLC because all your personal assets now are can be taken. Uh, versus if you got an LLC and you flood somebody's kitchen, uh, only the business assets can can be taken. So it, it's a hedge between your personal assets. Uh, two, you got to take care of uh, get get all the uh, tax breaks that come with an LLC. Um, you want to do that so you can make more money and, and take all the tax breaks to come. Uh, how long does it normally take for Marcone to process your application? It's been like five days. I have applied and I heard nothing back from them. Is this normal? Uh, you have to think. Uh, we we in the middle of COVID, and and uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of a lot of places aren't working back full staff and not not in the building and stuff. I, I don't know if Marcone let you come in the building and stuff yet. You know, so all this stuff has got everything a, a little bit slower. And five days is not that is not that long uh, for you have to wait for them to process your application. Now, uh, look, we probably have to wait fifteen days for them to count the votes. So yeah, so right now uh, with COVID and stuff, yeah, that's not that's not long. Uh, can you send testimonials to customers' emails or texts? Uh, I don't know what you mean by that. Can I send my testimonials, I, I want to get customers' testimonials. And uh, what I would do, uh, I would take those, I, I, used to do, I used to do a newsletter. Once a month, I would, I would, I would write up a newsletter and have little tips in there. And on top of that, I would have all of the, uh, all of the testimonials that came in for that month. And everybody could go there and read them. 
Um, and uh, people love that testimonial. Cause like I said, they love to see their neighbors in there. They love to, you know, people just love the testimonials and see, see what was happening. So once a month we have maybe four pages, five pages of testimonials that I would send out with the newsletter where people could read them and people just love that. Um, and, and like I said, they had little tips and they had, I put my dry event offer in. Um, I would, um, I would actually uh, market other stuff like going on in the community that there was going on. I had other uh, companies like I had like a cleaning company that were advertised and, and, and I would send, send that information out in the newsletter. So I, I, I would, I would do that once a month and, uh, and people, people just loved it. Uh, girly girl. Um, don't know what's going on in my case. How long since you applied? Okay. There you go. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, fix. Greetings, Mike. Yes, as far as filing claims, we had to file three claims to settle customer complaints. And the insurance company says that nothing compared, I said that's nothing compared to companies that have 12 claims. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to have some claims. You're going to have some claims, unfortunately. Kevin Bryan, I paid for one customer complaint out my pocket a few months ago. Yeah, you do that. When you pay out your pocket, you want to get them to sign that form. Um, the saying it's over with. Yes, Mike, Lowe's customers appreciate. Uh, Lowe's customer accused me of uh, scratching plastic panel on dishwasher. Had to file a claim for $130 to settle, which was installation cost. Yeah, yeah, with that one, I just, uh, yeah, I, I've had that where they say you scratch the, um, you, you, you scratch the front of the panel. Or some of them say you you put a dent in the panel, and you you go look. I don't see no dent. Where you got to wait till the light get right here, and you got to stand to the left a little bit, put your head down. Um, you, you do all of that. Oh, okay. And so with that, okay. Uh, what do you, what would you like? I want a new panel. Uh, okay, put a new panel on and keep it moving. Okay. Okay. Oh, Sabine. Appointment quest is beautiful. I don't need to answer the phone anymore. They just go to my website now. Yeah, that, that's great. When you when you get uh, appointment quest, when they go schedule their own appointments, it's great. It's great. All right. Uh, Warren, um, I'm patient. I'm waiting till summer for those numbers. Uh, um, I'm enjoying slow, great month. Yeah, don't uh, don't be in a rush to, to get there. Um, enjoy enjoy this process that you all have right now. Uh, where you out here making great money, uh, living a, I'm telling you, living a great life. Uh, uh, enjoy this because just because you get out and you start, uh, you start having a bunch of subs and you start making a, a, a lot more money as far as that way, it'll get to a point where it, it might not be, it, it won't be as fun. And it won't, it won't be as fun. It, uh, it, to me, it, uh, it, it got to a point where it wasn't as fun. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like, uh, I just didn't, I got to a point where I just didn't like, uh, having subs. I didn't want to be responsible for, for nobody else. Uh, uh, I just want to be responsible for me because what happened when you got 30 people say, say like you got, uh, say for instance, you got five subs that's, that's dependent upon you. And, uh, those five subs, uh, each one of them got a wife and three kids and all that. All those people are depending on you to make the right decision and for you to actually make sure that, that their family is taken care of. So now you got all the, those people that you have to think about whenever you get ready to make a decision. And sometimes some decisions I needed to have made for myself and my family, uh, I did not make them uh, based upon uh, the position they might have put other uh, subs or employees that I had um, in the company. Uh, positions they would have put their families and stuff in. So it kind of kept me, kept me from actually making some decisions. Now, one was the fact when I was doing a, um, when I was doing a, um, when I was doing electrical contracting, um, it was a lot of money in electrical contracting, but you, you had to, you got to have some crews when you're doing electrical contracting. And um, I, I wanted to get out of it. Um, but because I had people, and especially when I found out that I could, I could become license holders, <laughs> for companies, I said I can make more money or, or just as much. I can I can make a great sum. Now, it won't make as more, but I can make a great sum of money. You don't have to do anything, and 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 from my license, uh, and and don't have to worry about subs or anything. 
and I, I can uh, I, I put off uh, becoming a license holder uh, because I didn't want my subs and stuff not to have work. Uh, but once my uh, once one of my sub when it got his contractor's license and he started doing it, and I could send my work to him and he he uh, we gone then I'm done. But uh, up until then, it kept me from making the decision to become a license holder. OK. Um, Mike, I have a huge business venture that I will be presenting to ABC fam when the time is right. Hopefully we can invest as a group and make all of us wealthy. wealthy. Okay, put it out there. All right, uh, Grabby, what about if the room in front of the, what about if the room in front of the dishwasher is small? I had one today, was about two feet from it, uh, from the wall. Um, if that's the case, if you ain't got enough room to get it out, let the customer know. Uh, this is a situation, uh, I don't have enough room. Sometimes they'll build an island right in front of the dishwasher, the refrigerator. You just tell them it, it, it can't, be, uh, can't be done. They, somebody got to come remove it. Or they they, they got to get somebody to get you enough room because they got to give you uh, uh, ample uh, ample working space. Uh, so uh, if you ain't got no working space, you just you tell them you just can't do it, and they got to get you some. They got to remove that obstacle that's in front of them. Now, if you're working on RVs and stuff like that, uh, I found out there it's best uh, to actually take it outside of the RV. I, I never could work on nothing inside of an RV. Uh, I mean, how do you request reviews from customers via email? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, you, you got a couple of ways uh, that you can do it. The way we used to do it, I don't do it. Like I say, uh, I'm winding down from the appliance repair business. But the way that uh, uh, we used to do it, um, after you complete a service call, if you're using stuff like Zoho, uh, if, you, if you're doing stuff like uh, uh, Appointment Quest, uh, if you have an automated system, uh, on Zoho, whenever I uh, I can have it so that whenever I uh, I bill out or uh, complete a service call, the, whenever the service call go to complete or bill out, it'll send an email uh, with a link and just say, hey, uh, uh, we try to do good service. Can you actually uh, go here and uh, on the link, they click on the link, it'll take them to the actual survey. Where they, and you don't want to put them through no survey to ask them a bunch of questions. Just put three or four questions and a comment. And so it's quick and easy so they can hit this, 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 and tell you what they think and go. You don't want to have nothing. They got to do uh, three pages, just two or three good questions and, and go into the comments. Um, you just have a link to that page on your website where they can put it in. Also, when the, uh, when they schedule their appointment uh, on your um, confirmation, you have that in your confirmation. Hey, after your service request, please go fill out a survey afterwards. You have a link. Same thing. Uh, when you do a reminder, put it on there. Go on there and fill it about the survey have a link so you can automate it like that and that way it'll actually come back and you want to ask for people too. say hey if we've done a good job just remember to fill out your survey and ask them if they have uh uh if they have a next door or facebook marketplace facebook uh neighborhood page to go online and give you a comment a good comment oh, okay uh caliber electrons i need to get a waiver i need to get a waiver form okay uh, oh, fix Mike. Could you explain the difference between having subcontractors and W two wage employees as far as being a business owner and filing taxes, which is easier or best to have or, or to do? Okay, to uh, to have subs, um, subs meaning that they're not employees of you. Everybody, it can be a gray area <laughs> with that now. But we have to do with the subs. Um, you have to make sure they have their own general liability insurance. So when you go get a sub you have them get their own general liability insurance and the same information that those uh, third party warranties make you fill out and become um, that, that form saying that, Hey, if some damages happen, happens and stuff that you are responsible, that they are responsible. Uh, also you want to put, you want them to put your company down as additional insurer. You do all of that to hold them just like the third party warranty company holds you. Now with that, you don't take no taxes out of their, uh, out of their, uh, um, money that you pay them. It's just like if somebody came to your house and fixed your, uh, fix your uh, plumbing, you had, a, you had a plumbing issue and a plumber came to your house and fixed your plumber, uh, you pay the plumber, you paying them the same thing. Uh, so you paying them, you're not contributing to their social security. Um, you not, you don't have to work up, uh, worry about workman's comp for them. You don't have to worry about, uh, uh, you don't have to worry about unemployment insurance and all that. You can let them go at any time. If you don't like the way they work and you just tell them, Hey, 
man, don't come back tomorrow. Matter of fact, get off the job right now. Go. There ain't no repercussions. If you got uh, if and now if you got a W two employee, um, you're gonna have to depending on uh, how much salary you pay them, your salary is gonna dictate how much workman's comp that you have to pay. So if you pay somebody a great salary, um, it's gonna make your workman's comp go up higher because if that person got hurt, workman's comp gonna have to kick in and pay more money to, to compensate for their salary. So uh, we got to pay workman's comp there. Um, if you got two or more employees, all uh, right. And other thing, what, what's going to happen? You got to pay uh, unemployment insurance uh, for them. Uh, so uh, you got you got to pay unemployment insurance. Uh, you got to take out their uh, social security. You got you no, know, they pay a portion of the social security, and then you have to match their social security. Um, not only that, you got to uh, pull their taxes out and send it to the state um, at the uh, at the end of every month, month or quarterly. Uh, I, uh, I, it dep that depends. North Carolina, it used to be you had to send it quarterly or, or at the end of every month. But then depending on how much money that you're pulling out, they might want to come pull it weekly. So they, you got to give them you got to get a state access to a bank account that you're going to hold the taxes with with holders in so they can go pull it whenever they get ready. You got to pull out their uh, federal taxes and send it in. So you have all that headache. And then on top of that, you can't just fire somebody. So somebody's doing a bad job and uh, and you want to get rid of them. If you fire them, you got to pay uh, unemployment insurance. Um, unemployment insurance, uh, people say, well, I, I work. That's my money, unemployment. Nah. You got to pay them. So so what happens, uh, the insurance pay them some, but you pay some. So you might, uh, you might be paying $300, $400 a week for somebody you fire for unemployment. They're not working with you, but you still got to pay the unemployment. So you, uh, when they get an unemployment, you got to still pay it. You, your company re is responsible for paying for their unemployment. And then what happens, because you had a claim against you for unemployment, now your unemployment insurance goes up. So you get to a point you don't want to fire nobody. You want somebody to quit. You, you make them do, you make them, uh, you, you make them uh, dig a footing. You do something to make them quit. If you can make them quit, then you ain't got to pay unemployment insurance. Well, it used to be like that. But now um, uh, in the states, they now the, the states, they're going to, it's almost impossible to not have to pay unemployment insurance because you can go there. For in, you go to the hearing, they make you go to like a hearing where you go in front of a like a caseworker, and they they get to decide if they get it or not. And they get it as, uh, back in the back during the time um, the, doing the dot com burst, well, not dot com burst, doing the uh, the housing bubble burst, and and they're giving people nine hundred dollars. Uh, they made unemployment match what people were getting for disability, and they let it go for two years. So <laughs> you know you you gotta keep paying that money. So. Uh, that's why I start. I stopped then, so I never have another employee. I just gonna have 1099s, and at the end of the year, whatever money I paid them, I send them a 1099, and that money is deducted from whatever uh, whatever um, income I brought in. So if I brought in a hundred thousand dollars, and uh, I paid somebody fifty thousand dollars a sub. Um, now my taxable income has dropped to fifty thousand. I'm gonna take the hundred thousand cash that I got in. Not gonna assign him fifty thousand of that to do his taxes. I got fifty thousand. I need to now use to do my taxes. Okay. Wow, we got a lot of a lot of stuff going on. All right. Um, I got a license. I got a question about the license holder thing. Uh, what's your email address? Uh, do you do you currently have contractor's license? Um, and let's see. I'll put the email address in here. But uh, do you currently have contractor's license? You need to have contractor's license. Uh, yeah, uh, that's what they think. I think they uh, built the island around. Yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah, can't do anything about that. They got to get that out of there. What type of lube do you use for rollers? Uh, also lube for belt pulleys. Um, you can you can use some lithium, but most of the time, if they squeaking, most of the time they bad. You need to replace them. Um, if they squeaking, most of the time the uh, the barons they, they're gonna be scarred and stuff. It's just time to replace them. If they're making a lot of noise. All right, uh, Greg B. I was working on a, a GE dryer yesterday. The heat element was three hundred dollars. 
and some change. There you go. Just for the uh, just for the heater element alone. Uh, the, uh, uh, that that was your cost. Or that's how much you build out. Uh, AV Civic Center. No one has ever gave this much free, valuable business info. Blessing to you, Mr. Mike. Uh, I was lost now. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. And um, and uh, this right here, the reason um, the, it's, it's, uh, it's because this, this is stuff that I've done. I've, I've done. I've done this, and uh, in the I've done this. This this, this I've, I ran this business for almost twenty years. So this is stuff that I've done. Um, I think a lot of people. With the uh, with the business stuff, a lot of them, um, a lot of people, not really into that business. That they they're not really into a business. That they they never really ran a business. To be honest with you, to actually give you that information uh, uh, on how to, how to handle stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, if it's one that you can restrain, uh, Greg B, see if you can restrain it. The heater element. Shorts on warranty is still old, old fix. Yeah, I think they owe everybody. I, every time I go somewhere to a trade show, I'm trying to look for their booth. I'm looking for somebody from Shorts. <laughs> so uh, we're running up on, on 9 o'clock. Um, like I say, uh, if you're in the uh, uh, online course, start looking. I'm going to be releasing modules. Um, I sent an email out like I did earlier today. Um, and when I come back on Monday, I actually announced the new dates uh, uh, to everybody then what the, what the dates are. I want to give the people time right now who actually uh, paid for the course already to go pick their dates. So on Monday, I announced the new dates. Uh, I want to I thank everybody for actually uh, uh, with Appliance Boot Camp. You all, are, um, I'm very, very, uh, very, very proud of what you all are doing. Um, like I say, it's coming up now. Uh, we're, we're a year in. Um, and to see, uh, everything, you know, people are always telling us, you know, businesses, you have to take three to four years to start making money. You guys are making money. You guys are, are quitting your jobs. Uh, and, and to see how to see the thirst of you all having for, uh, for this industry, um, and to do right by the industry It's nobody. I can honestly say, um, uh, I know I don't know anybody who's honestly out here trying to scam the industry. Everybody's trying to uphold it and, and do the right thing, which is great. And it, this this is wonderful. This is wonderful. And and you know and to see even 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 people who 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 started off a little a little slow at the beginning, see them now catching steam and going, um, and just uh, just seeing that that it works. It's working all across the country. And just think if uh, I, I've done a video earlier today where uh, I was out there at the uh, at the house looking at the young man or what they're doing and stuff. And just think if the school systems and and the society was really, really, really sincere about uh, preparing people for, for, for their future. If the school system really was sincere and one that really gives somebody uh, a career that could really do something for them. Uh, they could do it. They could do it. Uh, everything that everybody try to make this seem so hard, finding out is it's not hard at all. You all have came in here with never seen refrigeration, mastering refrigeration. Um, you all, uh, the electronic parts, you're mastering that. Uh, you're mastering the, the everything. You all are coming here doing it and mastering the business part uh, where you all are doing business. All this stuff where everybody uh, uh I don't want to say that. <laughs> ah, man. Ah, all this stuff where, where, where a lot of times where people talked about, especially uh, here I go again. I know people you you running the race thing. Nah, I I got I got us. I got to go to the to the base right here. Uh, a lot of times people often talks about African American businesses, and. Um, and uh, especially African Americans don't know how to run businesses and this and that. You all are killing businesses. You all are killing businesses, um, and, and you all are 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 actually. I can hold that too. <laughs> you all are, are coming in and are, are just uh, 
proving all that, all, all that, all that stuff wrong. You all are just pulling, proving all that stuff wrong. All of it, y'all proving it wrong. And um, and for a lot of times, people wanted to make you th- made wanted to make people. A lot of times, I felt like as uh, some of the entrepreneurs, especially uh, African American entrepreneurs who had figured a little bit of business out, who had figured how to run a little bit of a business. We oftentimes want to keep that close to our chest so we could could say, okay, look at me, uh, I'm here, and you you don't run a business, you can't be where I'm at, and you you uh uh you you don't have the lifestyle that that I have, and and I think I think for a while that uh, we kind of like that to be able to be able to tell people that, but you all now have came here, and uh, y'all shown it's nothing special about running no business, uh, um. You no, know, it's hard work, but you all are enjoying the hard work. But it's nothing special. It's no special gift. It's, it's, it, uh, if somebody just can be sincere and show us how to run businesses, we all will be great. We all will be great. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, um, the, the, I can't wait to see where we go in the next five to 10 years. Um, like I said, now I'm getting into a little bit more of the brick and mortar businesses um, because one, the property is so cheap and, uh, and I want something that I can, act, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to build my own little town up around here. See if you see if we can put Tulsa back together. Uh, and, uh, is it, if it's possible and yeah, I, I think it's possible. And, uh, a lot of times I'm finding out where people, uh, the way, the way business used to work, um, uh, people done the way I'm doing business. That's the way people used to do it. But they used to, they used to, when I went, when I was growing up and I went to Mr. Landis barbershop, Mr. Landis owned that barbershop. He owned the property. He owned the building. That was his barbershop. Uh, it wasn't nothing. I, I didn't know. And the same thing, you went to, you went to Nails Hair Salon. Uh, uh, it won't, it won't, it won't, uh, Nail owned that hair salon <laughs> and he owned the building that was in there. And what happened, uh, it won't nothing like you see today where people say they own a business, they own this, but they just renting the space out. Um, and what happened, I found out if I own that building, I, I, I take a lot of, uh, a lot of stress off the build business um, like that because it, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have so much debt is carrying. It's not carrying the debt <coughs> of, uh, of, uh, of rent and all the other stuff. And from there, the business got time to actually get his legs up under it and, and grow. And I, I'm finding out uh, it, it's not, it's not that hard to put a brick and mortar business together and, um, and, and build it the correct, you build it the correct way. Now, if you're trying to look for something, um, get in quick and you want to have uh, spend a hundred, go borrow a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars small business loan or a half a million dollar small business loan. Yeah. Your business it can be hard getting into business business and getting that thing up and running but if you're willing to put in the sweat equity that it takes to uh to get it up and running and um and get it going uh it's, it's not that hard to put a brick and mortar business together right here it's, it just haven't been that hard same thing with uh with the uh with the houses and stuff like that uh if if you take your time and actually um uh, buy uh, buy what you can afford and, and and put some effort behind it like my grandfather and them done you can you can pay for and, and build your own house um i'm looking for land now because after i finished i've done a couple of these I, I i think hey i can i can contract and build my own house now uh a little bit more uh so uh and and you all are doing the same thing you you all appliance repair business you all are coming in and and you all are killing it i mean you all are killing it um and i think going forward um in the next 10 to, in the next five to 10 i think before then the next two to five years it's gonna be hard to pull something over top of uh on us uh at, uh uh in these courses and uh investments and stuff like that you're not gonna be able to do that anymore because uh we're getting we're getting wise to the game and people are studying, and now you all got something you can actually, uh, y'all got a, uh, y'all got actual uh, a, a test script where you can apply it and test it and see if what you what people are telling you all is actually true. Uh, that uh, it's gonna be hard to pull 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 wool over our eyes going forward. Uh, so once again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. It's nine o'clock. Uh, tell the young lady I I, I respected her time, and uh, I'm getting off and join in on Monday.
on Monday, I announce uh, I will then announce the new dates to everybody. And uh, once again, thank everybody. Uh, what did what what's this right here? Uh, can, if anybody else has problems with choice home warranty, please contact. Let's try to get a class action lawsuit. Okay, all right. Yeah, let me know how it go. I'm 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 I'm, gonna, I'm looking for a, I'm looking to catch one of them at the gas station with a bat and take out the kneecaps. That's what I'm looking for. But uh, once again, thank y'all for tuning in.